Welcome to the Layman Seminary. Today, of course, we have my wife, Asawa Cole, the only word I know in, the, the, in her language, uh, with us today. And uh, um, she reminded me that this is the first video that we've done since we've been married. And so she's in progress. Married, but not we are not done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, true, we're in process. Um, so she's in Hong Kong and, and I'm in the U.S. and we're going to be doing a Bible study today. And uh, I have to teach tomorrow in my church. And one good thing about having a Christian wife, especially one that loves the Bible, is that she's a motivator for me. And it's good because um, I'm still not finished with my PowerPoint. But having someone to study with, um, to, to bounce your ideas off of, to ask questions and stuff, I recommend for anybody, whether you're a pastor or teacher or whatever, Sunday school teacher, um, basically the idea is, is that you're able to go through it with somebody and you get clarification. And so that's what I like studying uh, with Janet. It helps prepare me in those types of ways. Maybe you're good enough wherever you don't need to do all that, but you know, it's one of my tricks that I use and I enjoy it. And Janet teaches, so it helps her too, and it gives us something to do together. So, Janet, is there anything you want to say before we dive into this Bible study? Mm, yeah, thank you for watching, and right. and thank you for uh, the people on Facebook and on maybe me. Yes, yes, yeah. for all their support. Amen. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so... Basically, um, Janet, will you pray us in, please? No. What? Will passage? you pray for us? Yeah. What passage are we going oh, to? Oh, we're in Matthew seven fifteen through 20. Oh. Okay. Um, Father God, <clears throat> excuse me. Father God, thank you so much, oh Lord, once again, uh, for giving us opportunity to study with my uh, husband, oh dear God, Lord, uh, guide us, oh dear God, and I, I this is, a great privilege, oh Lord God, that um, he is uh, uh, have a gift of teaching, oh Lord. Uh, guide us and guide, uh, guide also the listeners that they can uh, benefit this video so that they can share to others also. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, I guess this is the right one. All right. So can you see that, Janet? Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to go in main presentation mode. I'm just going to keep it like that. Look, I don't even have a title yet, <laughs> but I will in a minute. Let me ask you a question. Do you know who this person is? No, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, mm, I saw on Facebook, but I forgot the name. <laughs> Sorry. That's Benny Hinn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Benny. Benny. Oh, they said that... Go ahead. Yeah. They say that that uh, they are they are teaching uh, a prosperity, right? He's also prosperity. Yeah. Supposedly, he's repented from that and now speaking against the uh, the prosperity gospel. Yeah, but uh, they are. Uh, he is, uh, but others don't believe. <laughs> yeah. Others yeah. don't believe unless. Unless he will, yeah, we we hope it's true. But some people say that he does this often. But regardless, the the point is is that his picture is to remind us because regardless of of whether he repents of, of the prosperity gospel, he mm -hmm. still has other false teachings. You know, yeah. mm. and I'm not doubting that he's a he's a he's a Christian. I believe he's a Christian. You know, I have no reason to doubt why he's a Christian. Some people don't believe it's possible for a Christian to be saved and yet be a false teacher. But mm. what I say is if it, uh, uh, most Christians, if not all Christians at all time, we have some kind of doctrinal error, something that we don't understand clearly or for whatever reason, you know, that we hold to that is not correct. And if it's possible to be incorrect in a little area, I believe it's a, a possible to be incorrect in a big area, even to the point of even um, being a false teacher. So anyway, I, 
as you know from online, this is a big thing that's going around. And so it just opens up the issue that in Matthew 7, it's dealing with false prophets or false teachers. And so we're going to be discussing that. So this is the division according to Constable's notes. Uh, we're not going to be in the Luke passage today. We're just going to be in, in Matthew 7. All right. But before we actually get into this passage, we're going to do something a little bit different. Rather than reading the Bible first, we're actually going to read the Didache. Have you ever heard of the Didache before? Didache, no. Um, you know, the word for the noun form for uh, teaching is the daskalos, right? Mm. And, oh, the okay. and the dasko is, is the, the verb. Well, Didache is, is, a, is, a, is a, another form for teaching. And uh, it was written during the first century, so before the Bible was completed. And uh, um, it's in Greek. I've, I've been blessed to have opportunities to translate some of it. But uh, basically, it helps us understand what the early church taught in the first century. Not saying what they taught is right. In fact, I would say a lot of it's wrong. But it gives you an idea of what was going on at that time. And it actually talks about these false teachers or something like that. So we're going to start there. Okay, do you want to read this Greek word? It's been a while since you've read a Greek word, so you want to read yeah. that? Christianos? Christianos? Yes, Christianos. You want to guess what that word is? Uh, Christianos is Christian. Christian. Yes, yes. It even sounds like the Spanish, right? Christ yeah, Christianos. Um, yeah. So in Acts, it's used in First Peter. That's where it says if anyone suffers as a Christian. Mm. Um, now, read this right here. This is from the Didache. Okay. But if he has no craft, according to your wisdom, provide how he shall live as a Christian among you. So this is talking about craft like in work. Like if he has no job, no skill, no vocation. And we're going to talk, we're going to go into more detail about this in a minute. But you see, it says he should live as a Christian among you. It's mm. saying that he should live in a Christian way. Okay. Mm. Mm. Want to try this word? Which one? What? Uh, this one right here. Can you see that? Oh, okay. Uh, Chris, Christioporo. Oh, Christiopo. This is a moo. So that's oh. him. My goodness, sorry, I don't have my Christium. Uh, That's a P, pain. Yeah, I know, P. I will not forget that. Christium. Christium. Uh, Christem. Christem. Poros? Yes, Poros. Yes. Poros. Okay. And Poros. Uh, uh, yeah. M. Poros means M -poros. traitor. Mm. And so this is only in Christian writings. This is from the Badag, which is, you know, the standard lexicon that we use. And a lexicon is just a Greek dictionary. Mm -hmm. So he here's, the, here's the, the English translation that Lightfoot did. So read this. But not in idleness. But if, he'll, if but he will not do this. If, he, if, but if he if, will. Yeah, if he will not do this, he is trafficking upon Christ. Beware of such men. So earlier it was talking about if you don't have a craft, you know, he should live as a Christian, right? But not mm. in idleness, not in laziness, okay? Mm. And then there's and they're saying, look, if he won't if he won't work, if he won't try to do anything meaningful, then he's trafficking upon Christ or trading upon Christ. In other words, he's using Christ to get a job. He's using mm. Christ to, to, to be provided for and all that. Using, using Christ just to have a money. Yeah, a money, reputation, and all that. Reputation, you know, yeah. and so, okay. So we're going to go in, now we're going to go into detail and we're going to read from the Didache. All right? right? Didache. When you say Didache, meaning from the teacher? Yeah, it means from the teaching. Because uh, it, from was, the it, teaching. Was a, it was a teaching manual, basically, that the church was using to deal with things. Um, oh, okay. So when you said DDK, 
it came from the teaching. Yeah, the teaching. That, during the time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who, whosoever therefore shall come and teach you all these things that have been said before, receive him. But if the teacher himself be perverted and teach a different doctrine to the destruction, therefore hear him not. But if to the increase of righteousness and the knowledge of the Lord, receive him as the Lord. Okay. But concerning the apostles and prophets, so though ye according to the ordinance of the gospel, let every apostle, when he cometh to you, be received as the Lord. But he shall not abide more than a single day. Or if there be need, a second likewise. But if he abide three days, he is a false prophet. And when he departeth, let the apostles receive nothing save bread. Until... He findeth shelter, but if he ask money, he is a false prophet. And 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 I think some of this is either influenced by first, uh, third John, second and third John, or maybe um, it was before. But basically, the idea is is that if you are a man of God, right, you're going to be involved in um, ministry. You're not mm -hmm. just going to take advantage of things. There's nothing wrong with hospitality, but don't just stay around and freeload, eat all the people's food and take advantage yeah, and all I, that. Yeah, and, I noticed that. Yeah, and so this was during the time because the Bible was not complete yet when mm -hmm. apostles and prophets still existed, or at least the people thought they existed, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. All right. And any prophet speaking in the spirit, ye shall not try neither discern. For every sin shall be forgiven, but this sin shall not be forgiven. Yet not everyone that speaketh in the spirit is a prophet, but only if he have the ways of the Lord. From his ways, therefore, the false prophet and the prophet shall be recognized. So this relates to the First Corinthians passage and the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit passage. I'm not going to go into talking about what those are. Mm. But it's basically saying there, these are general ideas of how you can tell whether a person is true or false. Um, remember, these are man-made distinctions based on interpretation of Scripture. But the, basically the idea is that the person wants, wants money, wants a place to stay, does not want to be involved in work, uh, is is claiming to be in the spirit, in other words, charismatic, but um, what he's saying is going against the word of God, uh, then don't listen to them, that type of stuff like that. So, okay, so read the next one. And no prophet, when he ordereth a table in the spirit shall eat of it, Otherwise, he is a false prophet, and every prophet teaching the truth, if he doeth not what he teacheth, is a false prophet. And every prophet approves and found true, if he doeth out as an outward mystery typical of the church, and yet teacheth you not to do all that he himself doeth shall not be judged be because you he before hath you. huh before you yeah before you he hath his judgment in the presence of god thank you for making it bigger uh -huh. for in uh, for in like manner also did the prophets of old time 12 and whosoever shall say in the spirit, give me silver or anything else, ye shall not listen to him. But if he tell you to give on behalf of others that are in want, let no man judge him. 
So basically, they're just dealing with this general idea. Number one, you got to judge his teaching. Number two, he can't be selfish, you know. And yeah, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes prosperity, that's their alibi or that's their explanation. We are giving people. We are helping people. We have a lot of ministry. The money that we... Yeah. You know. But remember, just because we're, we're studying the Didache right now before we get into scripture, it's not to show uh, what is true. It's to show what the church believed at that time so that we can uh -huh. help understand, you know, that's in the same century as the book of Matthew. Even though uh -huh. Matthew was probably written before, I'm not sure I have to check the timeline. And one's inspired mm -hmm. and the other one's not. But this is just an opportunity to expose um, people in the church to something they've probably never read before. You know? Okay. All right. So go ahead. I wish it wasn't in King James language. Yeah, so or difficult. I struggle to... with understanding that, but, you know. Yeah, so difficult. But let everyone that cometh in in the name of the Lord be received. And, wh and then when ye have tested him, ye shall know him. For ye shall have understanding on the right hand and on the left. If the comer is a traveler, assist him so far as ye are able. But he shall not stay with you more than two or three days, if it be necessary. But if he wishes to settle with you, being a craftsman, let him work for and eat his bread. But if he has no craft, according to your wisdom, provide how he shall live as a Christian among you, but not in the idleness. If he will not do this, he is trafficking upon Christ. Beware of such men. Mm. Okay. Mm. Go ahead, read. But every, true, but every true prophet desiring to settle among you is worthy of his food. In like manner, a true teacher is also worthy, like the workman, of his food. Every first fruit, then, of the produce of the wine vat and of the threshing floor or thy oxen, and of thy sheep, thou shalt take and give us the first fruit to the prophets, for they are your chief priests. But if ye have not a prophet, give them to the poor. If thou markest bread, take the first fruit and give according to the commandments. Verse 6, In like manner, when thou openest a jar of wine or of oil, take the fruit, the first fruit, and give to the prophets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of money and raiment and every position, take the first fruit. As shall seem good to thee, and give according to the commandments. So you can hear how their understanding of the Old Testament, you know, is kind of mixing together here. Mm -hmm. um, but also was kind of interesting. They they put a priority on the, the word of God, you know, that's coming from the prophet or so-called prophet and not on the poor. But they want the prophet to be able to help the poor, minister to the poor. But the primary focus is on the, the ministry rather than that aspect, you know. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of interesting. Um, so, all right. Now, this is from uh, A Defense of Free Grace, and this is from Dillo's chapter. Um, I didn't get it from Final Destiny just because it's more, uh, and, and uh, um, this is more recent. And I'm going to cut some of this down, but anyway, what basically Dillo argues is on other scholarship is that the passage that we're going to talk about it's going to mm -hmm. talk about false prophets from the outside the church. In other words, non-Christians. And then it's going to talk about uh, charismatics or miracle workers within the church. So you mm -hmm. have dangers on both. Okay? Okay. And what he says is that we have an inclusio here. 
So you see right here in this passage, in verse yeah. 16, you will know them by their fruits, and then look at 20, so then you will know them by their fruits. And, so, and also, so every good three bears. Yeah. Yeah. But the, but the, 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 the inclusio, of course, lets you know that this is one unit. And so this makes a distinction between 16 and 20, one unit, and then 21 through 23. 21 through 23 is the uh, I never knew you passage. Um, so anyway, go ahead and read this. The false, the false prophets from outside the church, you will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So yeah. then you will know them by their fruits. Okay, so I need to shrink this one. All right, so this is the second category, deluded miracle workers from within. All right, mm -hmm. so I'll read this <clears throat> part. Uh, and deluded, okay, you already said that. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing just for a moment to check my time because Janet only has 30 minutes. I know we're not there yet, but... I want to be respectful of her time because she's taking her food out. Do you see a time thing anywhere, Janet? Yeah, 1 o'clock p.m. here. Okay. So it was 12.30 earlier. No. When you no. start. <laughs> okay. I, I remember that. We got at least 15 more minutes. Okay. All right. I was trying to see if there was a ticker for us how long this video was going. But all right, back to Sharon's screen. Okay, so there's our verse, first verse. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. And this is what Constable's note says about this passage. He said, these, we don't know the details of what they're talking about, but these people were misrepresenting God's divine revelation. Their motive was ultimately self-serving, and the end of their victims would be destruction. Uh, so it's talking about the effect that the false teachers have on the people. These characteristics are implicit in Jesus' description of them. The scribes and the Pharisees manned the narrow gate, but it was not the gate that led to the narrow way leading to life. So he's relating it to them. Now, to understand false prophecy, we need to go all the way back to the Old Testament because this is what was in the mind of the original audience of Matthew and stuff or what every Jew should have known. So, um, go ahead, start reading right here, please. Uh, Deuteronomy 13, 1. If a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign of the wonder comes true concerning which he spoke to you, saying, let us go after other gods whom you have not known, and let us serve them. So, you see right here so far, this is talking about false teachers or prophets yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that can have supernatural abilities. Mm. It's saying they're, the, what they said came true. So mm. just because a person claims to be a prophet and what they say don't come true, that it, uh, it or what if it says does come true, it doesn't mean that they're a prophet. So mm. that's a, there's a principle there. All right, keep keep going. Verse 3, you shall not listen to the words of the prophet prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the lord your god is testing you to find out if you love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul verse 4 you shall follow the lord your god and fear him and you shall keep his commandments listen to his voice serve him and cling to him 
But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has counseled rebellion, rebellion against the Lord your God who brought you from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery to seduce you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall pour the evil from among you. Verse 6, if your brother, your mother's son, or your son or daughter, or the wife you cherish, or your friend who is as your own soul, entice you secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, whom neither you nor, you nor your fathers have known. Close. So this Close. is the principle, those close to you, like your family and friends, mm -hmm. they can lead you far from God. Yeah, yeah. I almost to say things about yeah. my family. Verse seven of the gods of the gods of the peoples who are around you, near you, or far from you, from one end to the to the uh, from one end of the earth to the other end. Verse eight: You shall not yield to him or listen to him, and your I shall not pity him, nor shall you spare or counsel him. Conceal him. Ah, conceal. Conceal. Nine. But you shall surely kill him. Oh, no. <laughs> your, your hand shall be first against him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hand of all the people. What? Yep. You sh uh, so you shall stone him to death because he has sought to seduce you from the Lord your God who brought you out from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Now, I want to make this clear. My goodness, uh, I, 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 I see the Muslim here. <laughs> yeah, well, all the Muslims pretty much did was um, copy the Old Testament and leave out God's grace, you yeah. know. And then twist some other stuff in there, but yeah, the um, the thing is, is that that this is underneath the Mosaic Law. It's underneath the theocracy, and so it's not the same as being underneath grace mm -hmm. and underneath the Church Age. Um, but regardless of what time period we're talking about, or what age, or what covenant we're dealing with here, um, the thing is, is that God was righteous and just in what He did. You know, some of this is difficult, but remember that the law had a purpose for the nation. And so, it, I mean, think about this. Why does he, why doesn't God don't kill the prophet himself? He has the people do it, you know? Why, why later on, you're going to see some other things that happen to these false prophets or false teachers or stuff that are, uh, and, and you'll be like, but why does God allow this to happen? And because and, and, God could just take him to hell if he was an unbeliever, you know, right then and there. But it seems like there's consequences after, even in this life, for what he does. So it's something I was meditating on when I was reading this. Um, but it's also important because in, in that passage in Matthew, it talks about destruction. And people assume, oh, destruction. The, the narrow way leads to destruction, it must be talking about hell. No, it's talking about destructive life, and in some cases, capital punishment and all of that. Of course, Jesus wasn't advocating capital punishment done by the church, but the, 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 um, there's an aspect of the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, which relates to uh, whenever the kingdom is being offered for the millennial kingdom and what it's going to be like and stuff like that. So, you know, those are some of the issues to take into consideration. I don't think that's the main thing at the forefront of, the, of that passage, but it is related. So anyway. But, but if, you know, it's very difficult. Other people can read that and take it literally because that that is during that time, right? And yeah. Jesus, uh, in, in our time, this time is not related to that. It's not applicable in this time because Jesus is telling us that to love our enemies. Well, you will see even loving your enemies even underneath underneath the Mosaic Law. It's just, 
there's just a lot of issues involved there. And that's one of the, you know, I, I tell people, you know, whenever I use a lot of the Old Testament because I think it's key to understand the New Testament. But I, I tell them, I like, look, I, if you want me to explain all this stuff the best of my ability, I can. But this is not the primary focus of it. This is not a Bible study on Deuteronomy. It's a Bible study on Matthew. And I just want to expose you to some of the scriptures that will help you understand Matthew. Um, but um, I think it's also important just to recognize, uh, Janet, just as you are, you know, that some of this is, seems difficult. But if we remember that this is a theocracy and it's different from the church, I think that's helpful. Like, for example, read this part right here. Then all Israel will hear and be afraid and will never again do such a wicked things among you. So this, this is the, what's called the deterrence theory of criminology. In other words, you punish the other people like capital punishment or whatever, and you do it so that other people won't do the crime again, you know? And so the punishment was so severe on the nation of Israel um, so that other people wouldn't do it again. There's that aspect. Yeah, and, but... <laughs> but there's also this. And, you know, Deuteronomy is the, given to the second generation of Israelites that are fixing to go on the promised land. Just think of that. Their parents had witnessed all the stuff of the Exodus. And, yeah, and so I'm they're held they more accountable. Principle. Yeah, they're, they're held more accountable because God visibly manifested himself. But on another side of that, we're held accountable because we got more. We got more scripture than they do. We have more clarity than they do in some ways. So it's different, but God is still fair, just, and gracious in, in both the New Testament and the Old Testament. And so, you, I mean, you could do a whole study on that. But I, I just wanted people to be exposed to it because it's better that they hear it from me than they hear it from a Muslim or somebody online or somebody they interact with and they're not prepared to deal with it. You know, I'm not, I'm not a teacher that's going to hide parts of the word of God from people. I want people exposed to the whole word of God. And then we come together and we be careful and we study it. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So go ahead, read that. If you're here in one of your cities, which the Lord your God is giving you to live in, everyone saying Anyone saying that. that anyone saying that some worthless men have gone out from among you and have seduced the inhabitants of their city, saying, let us go and serve other gods whom you have not known. So now we're at the city level. First it was the prophet, then it was the family member or friends. Then now now we're at the city level. Hmm. Then you shall investigate and search out and inquire thoroughly. If it is true and the matter established that this abomination has been done among you, you shall surely strike the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying it and all that is in it and its cattle with the edge of the sword. My goodness. Woo. So no false teaching was to be tolerated at, at that time. And, you know, a lot of people jump on this word abomination. You know, homosexuality is an abomination. Well, contextually, I believe abomination refers to anything that the pagans are doing. Because mm -hmm. God wants them to be distinct. And so when they're false teaching, they're a teaching for the pagan. And so that's an abomination to the Lord. And notice there's investigation, and this is all like a court system to, to do this. And, you know, mm -hmm. all right. And so the, you see the scope is from family to the community issue now. Mm. And so the idea is, is that false teaching is this serious. Mm. Okay. Then you shall gather all its, what's booty? Booty refers to treasure, spoils of <coughs> war and stuff. Oh, and then you, you shall gather all. Booty because they think of someone's butt, you know, so. <laughs> Then you shall gather all its booty into the middle of its open square and burn the city and 
and all its booty with fire as a whole burnt offering to the Lord your God. And it shall be a ruin forever. It shall never be rebuilt. Okay. Nothing from what which is put under the bend shall cling to your hand. In order that the Lord may turn from his burning anger and show mercy to you and have compassion on you and make you increase just as he has sworn to your fathers. And see, this is why it makes no sense, Janet, for people today to go around claiming to be prophets. You know, because even, even if I thought I had to give a prophecy, I would not say I had to give a prophecy because, and, and even if I believed it existed at this time, which I don't, because I read these passages and I see the consequences of what, how, how serious God took false prophecy. And a mm. prophet can't be uh, wrong any time. You know, I mean, there are times whenever a prophet is not, is not speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But in this context, you know, when these people are saying, thus says the Lord and all of that, and they're faking it or they're, they're deceived or whatever, it, you know. And so, the, but the passage, the emphasis on this passage is about going after other gods. So this is like a false prophet from a wanting to uh, get you to go after another religion. But they're going to see some other passages that are going to talk about another kind of false prophet. But anyway. Um, so go ahead. If you will listen to the voice of the Lord your God, keeping all his commandments, which I am commanding you today, and doing what is right in the sight of the Lord your God. For those nations which you shall depossess, listen to those who practice witchcraft and to diviners. Di huh? diviners but as for you the lord your god has not allowed you to do so so they get their revelation so-called revelation from mm -hmm. demon witchcraft uh, all of that stuff divining um so what we see here there's a distinction in how revelation is given mm. okay the lord your god will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you from your countrymen you shall listen to him mm. so this That's is a revelation. Moses will arise yeah it's, uh, I remember also in the revelation revelation 10 I think okay if I'm not mistaken yeah you're probably thinking of the two witnesses but ultimately <laughs> this refers to Jesus Christ the Lord your God will raise up for you to a prophet like that. No, this wait. is according to all that you ask of the Lord your God in Horeb on the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Let me not see this great fire anymore, or I will die. Okay, now watch this. The Lord said to me, They have spoken well. So check this out. This prophet, and like I said, I'm not doing a study in Deuteronomy, but this is my observations at this level. This same prophet is also supposed to be a mediator between God and man because they said this about the mountain. You know, they don't want to die and all of that. And so the Lord said they've spoken well. And you think about Jesus Christ, you know, from we know from the New Testament, he's called that prophet and he's called the one mediator between God and man. So I, I thought that was interesting. Not saying it's a type or anything, just recognizing that uh, Christ fulfills both roles. All right. I will raise up a prophet from among their countrymen like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I commanded, command him. Okay. It shall come about that whoever will not listen to my words which he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. So the people are being held accountable for not obeying the prophet. Mm. Go ahead. But the prophet who speak a word presumptuously in my name which I have not commanded him to speak 
or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. So there's two things here. Number one, there's the presumptuous prophet. In other words, he's assuming that God's speaking or rebellious. Mm -hmm. and, and the other one is and that goes after another God. So you have to type there. You have the one that's saying, I, I'm a true prophet of God, and that's follow Yahweh, but here's all the future stuff, or here's what you should do. And then there's the other group, at least from my observation, which is saying, let's go after the other God. So you got two types of prophets there. Yeah, I uh, that that two that two organization that I known for that kind of concept, yes. is the Muslim and the Jehovah Witness, they are saying that, oh, Jesus Christ is coming this year, like this year, and then nothing happened. <laughs> so they are they are already shall die. Yeah, Sorry. The, yeah. If they were underneath the law, yeah, they would be dead. You will be dead. You you may say in your heart, how will we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? So we have the two kinds of prophets, wrong religion, but backed up with power. So they had the ability, supernatural ability. And then they also had the right religion, but they were not reliable. Okay. Mm. Now watch what this says. When, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Oh, so meaning the prophets can mistake because it's always just assumption. Yeah, it's wrong. Yeah, so, but it doesn't not saying mean, he's a true prophet or a false prophet. It, yeah. It, but... But by doing this, you know that he's not underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so you shouldn't listen to him. Hmm. Okay. Here's some passages from Jeremiah. Listen to this. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them. Go ahead. That's a new one. Yep. Uh, everyone is greedy for gain, and from the prophet even to the priest. Everyone deals falsely. They have healed the, bro the brokenness of my people superficially, saying, peace, peace. <laughs> but there is no peace. <laughs> were, they were they ashamed because of the abomination they have done? They were not even ashamed at all. They did not even know how to blush. <laughs> Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall at the time that I punish them. They shall be cast down, says the Lord. My goodness gracious, charismatic. <laughs> yeah, and what's interesting, the same passage shows up in Jeremiah chapter 8, so it repeats. Yeah. Um, goodness, peace. Don't worry. Don't know that the Lord is God. Uh, the Lord is there for you. How do you know? <laughs> well, He's there, but that doesn't mean He approves of everything you do. Yeah. But they want you. They want. They want everyone to approve of what they're doing. Yeah. How can you say we're we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? <laughs> but behold, the lying pen of the of the scribes has made it into a lie. The wise men are put to shame. They are dismayed and caught. Behold, they have rejected that at the word of the Lord. And what kind of wisdom do you have? Therefore, I will give their wives to others. Oh my goodness. Their fields to new owners. Okay, now this is what I was thinking about <laughs> earlier. No, I, don't say, oh, Charlie, do not be a false prophet or you'll be given to another. Don't say <laughs> that. That's what you're thinking. You are the one who's saying Good thing. Yeah, this is my point. This is my point from earlier <coughs> is that, um, you know, think about this. If a prophet is false prophesizing or someone claiming to be a prophet that's not, God could kill them just like that, right? Yeah. And end it. But why does he allow the wives to be given to someone else or the fields to go to somewhere else? Yeah, that's true that after he dies. But the point is, 
the point is, is that there's also these temporal or earthly consequences for this, which is kind of interesting because, like I said, the Lord can just deal swiftly with a prophet and not have all these other consequences. But he chooses to deal, he chooses to allow these consequences to occur. And I think it emphasizes the seriousness of false prophecy, but also that a believer can false prophesy. You know, uh, they could fall into that. And it doesn't mean they're going to go to hell. It means that they're going to suffer consequences. And you'll see some of that from the New Testament later on. But um, so, yeah, that's pretty bad. All right. So next. Then, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophecy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy. And say to those who prophesy from their own inspiration, listen to the word of the Lord. Okay. Thus says the Lord God, woe to the foolish prophets who are following their own spirit and have seen nothing. Oh, yeah. Israel, your prophets have been like foxes among ruins. So they think, oh, I'm speaking by the spirit. They have not seen nothing. They got no revelation. Mm. You have not gone up into the breaches, nor did you build the wall around the house of Israel to stand in the battle on the day of the Lord. Yeah. They see falsehood and lying divination who are saying, the Lord decree, declares when the Lord has not seen the, sent them, yet they hope for the fulfillment of their word. That's that kind of idea wherever you meet somebody and all they want to say is, oh, that's confirmation, you know, <laughs> Be because, because they hope that their word will be fulfilled because they say, oh, I'm a prophet. Oh, yeah. And then you reject him. Oh, yeah, that's confirmation because I'm being rejected. They have a martyr's complex, as it's called, or they look for the fulfillment. They look for any single thing. See, I prophesied about this and they have a general idea and then they see something on the news or something specific and they're like, look, there's the fulfillment of my words. Yeah. It's crazy. Did you not see a false vision and speak a lying divination when you said the Lord declares, but it is not I who have spoken? Here, uh, her princes within her are like wolves tearing the prey by shedding blood and destroying lives in order to get this honest gain. What's interesting is in the passage that we're in about the false prophets, it says they're like ravenous wolves and um, seeking who they may devour. Or, or I'm sorry, I'm quoting another passage, but, but destroying <laughs> and stuff. First so you, Yeah, yeah. So you have, you kind of have both ideas going on here the wolves and the destroying aspect and then the dishonest gain is their motive her prophets have smeared whitewash for them saying false vision and divining lies for them saying thus says the lord god when the lord has not spoken oh, they are crazy okay all right her prophets are reckless uh treacherous men her priests have profaned the sanctuary they have done violence to the law now i didn't look at the hebrew but i thought this was interesting that it said done violence to the law you know really and, and a lot of times they're doing violence by the law they're using the law to justify things or they're going against the law and that seems to be the idea here they're going against it they're doing violence to the law. They've perverted it, and they're, it's like they're attacking it. They've done damage to, to the, by misrepresenting the Mosaic law. They've distorted it. They've perverted it. Okay, so I think that's our check? time. Yeah, it's already 15 minutes, already one hour and a half, Charlie. No, it's not. All right. Um, you'll see in a minute whenever I upload the video how long it was. But anyway, um, yeah, so... See, the problem is, is that if I'm going to be teaching, I'm going to be preaching, teaching for about 45 minutes. And mm -hmm. right now, what I have is too long. Yeah, yeah so, because we have interaction, you know. Yeah, we have that's fine, because I'm going to have interaction there as well. And what I'll probably do is while you're working, I'll probably make a part two and pick up where we left off. Okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have one with you and then one by myself. 
-hmm. and and this time i'll just summarize the parts that we already went through and i'll mm -hmm. check my timing for that and they'll help me more yeah, sure. so, so hopefully those support. that are watching this video um will you know uh keep us in prayer thumbs up you know like uh, share this video with others subscribe and there are ways to donate to the ministry if you're led um but uh yeah so hopefully we've demonstrated one way in which you can prepare for studying study with your wife josh he studies with um lacy <laughs> all the time you know mm -hmm. i know robert and debbie they study together um so yeah mm -hmm. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it's good when your wife is a Christian and you can study the word to get, uh, together. Um, but find somebody to study with to help prepare. And if you're teaching that way, whenever you teach to somebody else, you already have one layer of anticipating your audience or clarity. And so anyway, uh, God bless.